Well, hello, everybody. I am bald, beautiful, and uh, Dave. With me, I have ASMR Dave and Troll Dave. I mean, hey, uh, I'm Murig, and with me, I have Pity Wonk and uh, Mishra's Masterpiece. Hey, everybody. What's going on, everyone? So there's a reason why we're sitting here doing our introduction. Uh... Because some dumbass rapper decided to copyright the intro to this game, and we don't want to uh, mute the VOD. So we're just hanging out here while introduction, you know, introductions are said. <laughs> which Dave is which? We don't know. <laughs> we're all Dave. Go with it. <laughs> okay, yeah, there is a 10 minute poll for save the animals or save the frames anybody that uh you know watches gdq and has seen sm speed runs knows exactly what that is and uh the commentators will let me know when the polls <laughs> dave, no, the dave, frames. dave the frames <laughs> <laughs> so i'm going to reset the console and time starts when i start the game but i will count it down so give me one moment here my input display is it is working sweet <clears throat> but i thought i would bring one of the most obscure games to uh the snes to this marathon uh dave we are starting in on go three two one go all right so i'm asmr dave aka pity wonk <laughs> that would leave me as troll dave aka mishra so we're starting out here in uh, everybody's favorite purgatory for super metroid runners series so this is a space station where they were studying the baby metroid that you'll see multiple times throughout the game here and uh, everybody who is reset heavy in Super Metroid sees this all the time. So very, I don't know what very you're exciting. About. <laughs> the scientists are taking a nap, by the way. They're fine. They'll wake up later. And there's the baby. This is everybody's favorite Pogodactyl, Ridley. <laughs> we will be seeing him later on in the game as well. So yeah, this game came out way back in 1994, and since I'm old, I was actually there to play it. <laughs> <laughs> and somehow people still play the game now. It's a very active community, obviously. People see Oats and Goats, Behemoth, Zinni, Soast, you know, all those guys running. We've actually had a couple of world records here recently for both Any Percent and Undo, so it's exciting times to run the game. Uh, okay. Uh, what we've had Seriously. here... Mirig has encountered the true enemy and final boss of the game, Steam. <laughs> you notice uh, he just did a, a wall jump up the side of the wall there. That is really, really difficult to do through that door because of the steam. That's actually a pretty good series considering the RNG he had from the troll steam there. Oh yeah, Mio Dtex knows exactly what's going on. Steam stole the world record, so yes, it is the final boss. Right, I, I watched that first. run. Oh, that bummer. run was ridiculous. Such a bummer. And for those wondering, uh, series was a forty-two sixty-seven. So y'all lose. <laughs> All right, so we've just landed on planet Zebes or Zebes, depending on how you want to pronounce it. We're going to be doing some of the fun sections of the game. It's really strange that two of the hardest sections of the game are actually at the Maybe beginning two. of the game, uh, Parlor and Climb. So Mary just did a what's called a moonfall down Parlor there, and he's doing another one on Climb. It is a glitch that allows for you to fall much faster than intended by the game. And if you don't execute those properly, then you end up having a bad time. Also going through the pit room here. If you fall in the pit, it slows you down. Uh, we call it a pit check in Mirig's channel. No pits. 
No pitch checks required today. All right, grabbing the morph ball here. All of this is actually from the original NES uh, Metroid, what we refer to as Nestroid. So it's interesting they brought this back uh, way back in 1994 for Metroid 3. Although that game did not have angle down and angle up. First missile pack. Speaking and to get out of this room, we're going to be executing uh, what's called a mock ball. That's a very short version. It looks easier than it is, and it makes you go just as fast as you do running. Uh, whereas normally you would go very slow when morphed. So one thing I'll mention, a lot of the, the movement that Mirig is doing, especially if you watch his inputs, very difficult to do. Lots of things happening at the same time, and he's making it look much easier than it actually is. That B-Sod makes, makes you want to finish Axiom Verge 2. Excellent. Excellent stuff. Uh, we had a pit. Two pits. Two uh -oh. pit. Uh, Mirig just, if you notice, he was turned around as he went through the door. That's called a door check. It is uh, very close to pixel perfect movement, and it allows for you to come to a complete stop and go straight up or down outside of a door. Difficult, but very helpful for what he just did with that wall jump. All right, going, oh, through, bugger. going through parlor here. He swear. Ah, didn't say it. Didn't say uh, it. I heard it. So if you notice, whenever Mirik was landing on those ledges, he kind of snapped onto the ledge instead of hopping way above it. That's called a ledge grab. It's actually a piece of tech that we use to make a lot less time for individual jumps within the game. Saves you a bunch of time over the entire game. And now we've got the bombs. And a bit of a surprise here that Chozo holding the bombs. Wait, what's this? It's It's doing something. It's melting? Oh, hey, it's actually uh, the first boss of the game. Spicy Chorizo. Spicy Chorizo. This is our bomb Chorizo. Pretty straightforward fight. No decapitation. All right. Yeah, if you if you go too far along in the fight, you actually get to see the head come off. That means you did oh, it wrong. that was weird. Yay, and jump inputs. So we're about to your input. Ate the input. So we're about to uh, work on Alcatraz here, one of the very <laughs> first tricks most people do. Uh, Mirig had hit it three Are times earlier today. And uh, now, of course, we're having issues. It is very difficult. It requires three wall jumps and, hey. and a morph at the end. Not too shabby. No, that, that's very clean. It's very difficult to do. Alright, moving through Terminator here. Everything looking pretty clean. First energy tank of the game. Ooh. Oh, wow. Both waivers. Alright, so we're clipping through those pirates there, kind of. Taking a little bit of damage, but it's quicker than using missiles, because you'll need the missiles coming up here for our first missile door upcoming. And if you notice, Miri just stopped right on top of that elevator and went down. He was using a terminology called stop on a dime. If you press the angle up or angle down button, it will stop you immediately, uh, no matter how fast you're running. And then if you press down at the same time, you'll hop right on the elevator. So this is a sequence break. You're actually supposed to get super missiles uh, for a, a, a boss that we consider DLC called Spore Spawn or Spospo. But we're skipping all that because this is a speed run and we're going to go ahead and get super missiles that you're supposed to get much, much later in the game. Excellent. A little weave action there. Yep, just skipping skipping all the Rios there. Make that whole process look easy. Uh, just kill that one with a bomb, why not? Give me a super. Nice. And if you notice uh, Mirig's, or Samus, the arm pump up and down. Every time you arm pump in this game, it moves you forward by one pixel. And if you do it often enough, it actually can save you a few seconds over the, the part of the game. Uh, it's 
not great for everybody, but if you do it enough, it actually does save time. Ooh. Totally an eaten input there. And now we've got the charge beam, which means if he holds the fire button down, it will produce a larger and more powerful shot. Big jump. Nice. Oh, I missed it. So Merrick was attempting what's called a damage boost. Uh, if you hit the enemy while turning around and holding jump within a five frame window, you can bounce backwards at a much higher rate of speed uh, than just going forward normally. It's a pretty, pretty nice piece of tech. So now we're entering Red Tower for the first time, the bane of most runners' existence. Got a mid-door jump entry there. Ooh, there we go. And a, a damage boost off of a particle. That is very difficult to do. Uh, the poll's ended. We're saving the animals, Mirig. Of course we are. Bastards. <laughs> oh, hey. That's bad. Oh, there we go. Another door check. That way you can go straight down right here. Saves a pretty good amount of time. And we're entering Crade's Warehouse. And the objective of Crade's Warehouse is not to see Crade's feet. You'll understand more about that here in just a moment, but <laughs> you, don't, you don't want to see Crade's feet. That's only on his OnlyFans. That's right. He's got his own feet Feetopedia page. No DLC, that's right. One. All right, so we're seeing our first eye door there. Uh, you almost saw an eye door. It, it went away. Door check. And Mirig is using that bomb to get in position for what's called the Kraid Quick Kill, which is two missiles and three supers. Hopefully we'll be seeing that versus Kraid's feet. Oh, you bitch. And we've entered the DLC phase. <laughs> Unfortunately, we can see Kraid's feet, if we're unlucky. Oh my god, really? Double block! What Mirig is trying to do is get Kraid to open his mouth there. He's run out of supers and missiles at this point, so we're going to be using charge shots. What an ass! Oh my god, I'm going to die. <laughs> you got this. Got this. And you got missiles. Okay. And there We're we good. go. Hooray! Marathon block. Yeah. So we're going to grab uh, the first suit upgrade in the game. It's called the Varia suit. That's actually a bad transliteration. It was originally supposed to be the barrier suit. Uh, it also applies to the original Metroid game, uh, but instead we got Varia and it's stuck. See if I can try to make some time up. Got a good damage boost off the spikes there. Going back through Mini Kraid. Got the arm pump action there. Uh, coming into this next room, uh, the flying green guys at the top of the screen are called Hee Hunters. Going out of this hole is usually pretty hard, but Ooh. Mary just had a really good manip to make those guys uh. move out of the way. And that was that was smooth. So we're encountering our first frogs of the game. There's, a, there's an ongoing debate over whether everything in the game is a bug, a crab, or a frog. These are frogs. A little bit of a yeet there. So uh, in Mirix channel, we call it a yeet whenever you waste a missile or a super missile, uh, preferably a super missile. All right, that was a smooth movement right there. Got the mock ball and the super perfect timing. Excellent. Uh, professor knows what's going on. <laughs> Exclamation point yeet. <laughs> All right, so that little lava-looking guy on the bottom there is called a Sova, and 
you got to kill it in order for the door to open. And if you don't open the door now, then you have to do it on the way back in and it's not fun. But we got it. So that that looks good. Going to grab the high jump. His boots were made for jumping. And now you can jump while you're high, Murig. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Interesting thing, the fanfare that you get to hear so many times during this process is six seconds long. Uh, it's the bane of everybody's existence. We hear it in our sleep. All right, moving into Cathedral here. Clean. So if you hold a charge shot while you're spinning, it will unleash what is called a pseudo screw. There is a, a piece of tech that we will not be getting in the 100% run called the screw attack, but that is a, a, a fake way of doing it by using charge instead. All right, entering Bubble Mountain, one of the most infamous rooms in the game here. We're gonna be trying to jump up here. That cack up at the top is called King Cack, and King Cack was merciful today and let Mirig past without a spike. I forgot to jump through the door. So when Mirig says he forgot to jump through the door, there is a, a tech called door fixing. Uh, when you go through a door, it typically takes about 42 frames. If you don't line the door up properly when you move into the next room, it actually takes up more frames. Uh, anywhere up to a, almost a full second uh, can be lost just going through doors at a time. Uh, so Mary lost maybe 10, 15, 20 frames by not having that door aligned properly. All right, now we've got the speed booster. And this, uh, this, this effectively breaks the game in some ways, but see more about that here later on when we start using tech associated with speed booster all right let's see if we can make it through the platforms without clipping through them excellent those platforms uh they look wider than they actually are for hitbox purposes it's easy to fall through them uh, really annoying Ooh. excellent now we'll be getting the wave beam fake spikes it's a lot of things in this game that are fake including the spikes All right, if you notice, uh, Miri just somehow walked across that gap in the floor. It's a gap skip. And killing those enemies, getting out of the way of the bomb. If you hit the bomb, whenever it goes off, it will bounce you into the air. It's an uninterruptible animation. It causes a little bit of time while you're waiting to get that back up. Plowing through the um, frogs, that's Frog Speedway. Very nice. So there are a couple of different ways that any percent runners go. We're, we're going through the route that's known as K, uh, KPRD. So, I'm sorry, KPDR. KPDR. Wow. So it's uh, <laughs> Craid, Fantoon, Dragon, and Ridley. And there are a couple different ways to go about getting uh, through those bosses. There are other routes. Uh, there's a newer route called uh, PRKD that is faster, and the world records are all set in PRKD. Mary just performing the Alpha Spark. Very difficult maneuver to get through. Looks very, very neat. She is off a few seconds there. That's an example of what the speed booster can do. You can propel yourself across the screen using what's called a shine spark. You have to have a certain amount of frames run in order to generate a shine spark, and then you have to press down in order to activate it. 
You can only hold it for a certain period of time before it has to be released or you lose it. You'll see more examples of that later. Really sick damage boosts off the spikes in the hellway there. Traffic very light on the hellway today. <laughs> And now moving into the Alpha Power Bomb. So we're going to be getting our first set of Power Bombs. No snack time today for the Vile Flumes on the floor. Uh, very close. And so now we're going to be playing with Power. We've got Power Bombs. Moving up this other side of Red Tower, we're going to be making our way to a part of the game known as the Wreck Ship. At some point in the past, a giant spaceship crashed into Zeebies. And we're going to go find out what's hanging out over there. Ooh, that was close. Amiri's going to be attempting a, a very difficult move called the Ocean Fly. It is very, very hard to do. Let's see if nope. we can grab it. Did not have the input needed for that, so we have crossed the moat. And now we'll be doing another Shine Spark to get across the rest of this here. So I was about two frames off on that. Yeah. So we've, been, we've now entered the wreck ship. If you notice, the power appears to be off. You got a, all these bugs running around. None of the doors are active. Kind of got ghosts flying around randomly for some reason. Looks like it's in pretty bad shape. <laughs> that, was, that was pretty sweet. So if you get the right amount of momentum and you're moving into something that could be turned into a shine spark, you can actually roll through obstacles uh, instead of having to bomb them. Oh, we got flames here. It's the uh, the run killer. Fantoon, ghost that's hogging all the power for the wrecked ship here. Don't be a mid. Don't be a mid. So you've got three Thank different you. patterns that can happen every round for Fantoon. You've got a fast pattern, which I believe takes two seconds. You've got a mid, which I believe takes five. And then you've got a slow that I believe takes ten. You want fast, typically. Hit the X-Factor there, too. Uh, X-Factor, pretty neat maneuver. It is a a technology that requires use of a power bomb and the wave beam. Pretty quick. A uh, two round Fantoon is actually really, really good. And a slow fast is a really good pattern to get as well. Alright, so the power is on. Lights are on. Let's see if anybody's home. Oh, we got robots. Like we're probably going to need to call an electrician. <laughs> uh, maybe two or three. Yeah, just just a couple. That's what the bots are for, right? They just kind of wander around and shoot shoot random things. So I don't know if they're helping. So we're going to be skipping the majority of the wreck ship uh, because we don't need most of it. We really just have to kill Fansoon and move on up to the next section at the top, which we call the attic. You'll see Attic for just a few seconds, which is as intended. Drop in a power bomb that will kill those key hunters, the green things there. Nice. And we have a shine spark that took out all the other enemies in the room. You had to do that to open that door, and uh, that was Attic. It only takes about 30 seconds in a casual gameplay. So we're about to be entering an area of the game known as bowling. Uh, people will need to take a look and tell me why it's called bowling, but you'll see. A uh, professor says the robots are there for decoration. Yeah, they also make a funny noise that some people are, uh, you know, think uh, they're saying "fuckboy." Um, so yeah. <laughs> just uh, just depends on what your what your opinion is there. All Woo! right, so we jumped. Jumped across all those spikes. If you notice, there are those cross-looking things at the top of the ceiling. You're supposed to have a grapple beam when you get here. We don't ever see that. I don't know what that is. I think that's DLC. So the Chozo has grabbed Mirig by the balls at this point. 
<laughs> carrying him across those spikes like he's going to go bowling. Uh, there we go. Mirig's blue balls on display for everybody to see. <laughs> and if Mirig is not careful in this next room, you can actually clip through the gravity suit and out the door in what's called a Nevdi skip. Unfortunately, our runner named Nevdi did that in a tournament a while back. And uh, like so many things, he got the trick named after him. Not the best way to go about it. All right, so we're basically oh, you back, back the way we came. <laughs> uh, nope. Bail. All right, so we're going to be going back down through Red Tower, killing the crabs to get a couple more power bombs and some energy there. We want to make sure we have good resources going into the next area. We're going to be going back down into Red Tower through the hallway again. See if the traffic's any good this time around. Oh, hey, I missed the Moonfall. Moonfall is difficult to get. Ooh, Can that's not good. Boost? Missed it. Got it that time. <laughs> All right. Did not, did not feed a vile plume today. All right, so making our way back down through Red Tower. We're going to be going through some familiar territory here, but I'll tell you what, way back in the, back in my day, uh, if Bova <laughs> is here, you can, you can toss that old man yells at clouds. Uh, we're going to be doing something that was really neat for the Super Nintendo back in 1994. We're going to be manipulating the environment of the game. Uh, and when this game came out, it was very unusual for the environment to be able to be changed like this. So Mirig is about to be blowing up the tube. And there you go. Tube has been blown. So we're now in Meridia, uh, and there's a runner named Dice uh, in ESA a few years back made the joke that Meridia is filled with the tears of failed runners, uh, and that is often the case. I've never heard that one. Yes, salty, salty tears. All right, making our way through here. So we're going to be coming up on another boss here in the near future named Batwoon, although there are other names. We'll keep those for another time. Mirig once again making all of this look easy. It is not. Originally supposed to have a grapple beam for all of that, just wall jumping up. All right, so we got pretty good resources coming into Batwoon here. Let's see if we get a good fight. Oh, so Mirig performing, nope. performing <laughs> X Factor there. It is a swing and a miss. Uh, so the X Factor particles will hang around until they go away, and you cannot shoot until they go away. So he's got to wait for that particle to to go away now. It has. All right, so Batwoon's going to do a little whack a mole with you. Missed that in practice, too. Uh, Batwoon is a little bit tricky. Nice dodge. All right, Batwoon now dead. Yoga was a little wide right, yeah. Grabbing our fourth energy tank here, a Batwoon tank. Farm. Do just a tiny amount of farming here before we move on to our next area. Ooh. Oh, very nice. So if you notice, if you use the Shine Spark and you hit the Shine Spark, it actually sends out shadows to the side that can damage enemies. Very neat. Once again, ignoring the fact that we're supposed to have Grapple Beam just wall jumping through this room, also known as Coliseum. Ah, man. Missed the D-boost. Coliseum, not, not easy. You can get stuck in the sand very easily. Hey, those spikes, they aren't moving. Oh, it's fake. 
Oh, hey, it's another <laughs> idol. It must be a boss. So there's a, a big debate on this boss, whether it is male or female. Uh, it is Dragon. Kill those turrets there. It is definitely an asshole, at least. Yes, yes, indeed. Does not matter the gender <laughs> identification of this particular boss. It is a giant shrimp that is painful. So Merrick's going to be performing what's called the Rain Dance. If you notice, he's generated another X Factor, and he's charging a Shine Spark. Uh, Dragon, one, one of the few bosses that you can actually Shine Spark through oh, in order no. to cause damage. You bet. You also Hold have to on. be careful because there is a possibility of getting chain damage, which can kill you. Yeah, chain damage can do infinite damage. Also, in very rare circumstances, <laughs> Dragon can be killed off screen, and I believe it takes somewhere around 15 minutes for Dragon to come on screen very Are slowly. You the game? A little bit of bad time. All right. All right, one last shine spark. Ooh, that was chain damage right there. Oh, uh, chain damage. Almost, almost died. So Mick's trying to get a spark suit there. Nope. No dice. If you are able to get that spark suit, it means you hold a shine spark, even though it doesn't show because normally you flash whenever you have one. You can perform a, a maneuver on the way back called the halfie. Uh, in this case, it'd be a full halfie or reverse halfie. We now have the worst tech in the game. It's called the space jump. We refer to it as space junk. It's great underwater. It's very bad everywhere else. America is going to be performing the backup for the reverse halfie called the wample jump. Basically trying to hold speed while not hitting any of the bricks at the top or the pipes at the bottom. That way you can move over as quickly as possible through that room. All right, so that door is now open. We're going to be moving through Cack Alley. We're on our way to get the plasma beam. Uh, I see Professor says that the uh, Dragon needs to be microwaved. There is actually a tech that you can use to microwave Dragon using an X-ray. We don't get X-ray in this run, so it does not apply. All right, skipping the fish there. We're going up get plasma pretty clean. This next room very painful because you've got pancakes. And it makes it look easy. I don't know what's going on with that little platoon of white guys, but here we are. That was a little bit low, Mirig. I don't know if you got him. No, I didn't. I got the left side one, though. So what Mirig was trying to do is activate the pirates on the wall so they come down. That way he's able to shoot them more quickly than having to jump up and then come back down. It's a strat to make this room just a hair faster. We've now got the strongest beam in the game, the plasma beam does a very good amount of damage. Oh, nice, nice. What the fight. hell was that? That was really strange. <laughs> the, the interesting thing about this game is a lot of the buttons do more than one thing. There's a lot of tech in this game that you can you can do if you know what you're if you know what you're pressing at the right time. But occasionally you get some weird effects like what just happened with that plasma shot. Yeah, it almost did look like a wraparound shot. There, there are certain areas of the game where if you shoot properly, they will actually go across the stream, uh, across the screen, and come out on the other side. It's more prominent in the 100% uh, run. I'm gonna farm health here. Uh, nice, nice health, nice health from the crabs. Oh, you bastard! <laughs> It's interesting enough, when we pass this way earlier, this is going to go back down in the room past the tube. That that hole has been there the whole time, you just can't see it normally.
Oh, Javon, thank you for the good luck and positive vibes. Glad you're here. Oh, Javon, thank you. So now we're going to go and get the ice beam. So you can get the ice beam early, like some runners do, or you can get the ice beam late, like Miri Absolutely does. Both well. are just fine. But oh, you wow. need to get the okay. ice beam sometime. Making that look very easy. All right, now everything requires an extra shot to kill. Congratulations, Merrick. Yay! <laughs> so coming back through Norfair here, there are actually two different routes you can go. There's the northern route and the southern route. With uh, late ice, as we refer to it, we'll be taking the southern route. We're going to be heading down to the next <laughs> boss in the lower Norfair. I just hit everything on the way through there. Hey, you're taking it. <laughs> just obliterating everything in the room. Man, that jump sucks. All right, we just skipped that energy refill. If you hit the energy <sighs> refill on accident, it costs you six seconds. Do not want that. Great in a casual run, horrible in a speed run. It's a secret passage. Hey, why didn't that little... Oh, hey, it's a damage boost. There we go. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Do you boost through the lava there? Running through the jaws of Ridley. And now for the best music in the game. Lies. Best music in the game. I'm Team Brinstar. <laughs> team Lord Norfair. All right, so this is where the game gets officially fun. A lot of uh, fun tech that Mirig is going to be showing off here. Those golden pirates uh, have to be hit by a charge shot in order to be damaged. We're going to be doing a very difficult triple tap Oh man, triple tap, triple stutter jump. In order to get what's called fast pillars, he makes it look easy. That is very, very difficult. If you don't do it, you get to bomb a bunch. Nice. And now we'll be entering the worst room in the game. That is actually what it is called. Making okay. it look very easy, very smooth. If it does not go That's well, then you have, you have a bad time. I don't want missiles, fuck it. Now moving into Amphitheater. Peace <laughs> Peace <laughs> And we've got a command in Mirig's channel called the Peace Wear that Mishri uses anytime that Mirig says the word fuck. All right, so Red Key Hunters. Tons of fun. Skipping through. All right, so Miri just clipped through that red key hunter using a hitbox maneuver. If you hit a uh, key hunter and some other enemies with a shot as you're moving through them, they are in high frames, and that means that you can clip through without receiving any damage on your own. It's very useful, and you'll see some more of that. We're now passing through the uh, room with the frogs with leg warmers. Those are giant frogs with uh, nice. very spiky leg warmers. They're comfy cozy. Yep. There, there's an argument over whether or not they're what actually makes it hot here. All right, we got the silver pirates. When they are silver, you cannot hit them. When they are gold, you can. I don't know why the TVs are back there, and I don't know why they're not on. Uh, maybe their cable is out. Uh, there's just nothing good on TV anymore. Oh. Nothing good on TV. Yeah, Samus ruined all the TV. I'm blaming Ridley for that one, actually. Oh boy. Okay, and uh, Ridley. Just a ton of fun. A ton of fun. So, yeah. Ridley will be using charge shots. As Misha mentioned earlier, Pogo Dactyl. If you see, that was a aborted, an aborted Pogo. Get a swoop instead. 
So Ridley has a giant, a giant flowchart that has uh, about a hundred different entries on it that determine whether or not he will swoop, whether he will hover, whether he will go one way or the other, whether he'll hang up up in the top corner of the room. All sorts of fun things. You're making oh. it look easy. Damn it. I think one more. Yep. Come get me. All right. So Ridley, Ridley is fun in the fact that uh, he will keep going after he is dead. He has to keep going until he picks you up. Luckily, Mary able to get picked up pretty quick. <laughs> Ridley does not pay for cable. That is correct, Professor. Oh, hey, the, the baby tube, it's empty. What's going on with that? Where'd the baby go? Where'd the baby go? So I picked that tank up for safety. The Ridley tank. It's a very, very good idea. Trying to make sure we have marathon safety here so everybody has a good time. There is another example of hitboxing. It's running right through those pirates. All right, going to be running back through the frog with leg warmers room once more. Got a power bomb drop there. And now we're going to be forming the escape from Lower Norfair. Oh. So the uh, Lower Norfair escape has killed many a run as well. There are a couple of rooms that are notorious for being difficult. Uh, three Musketeers will be coming up here in a bit. Certainly seen a uh, oh, share of world records die. You shithead, get out of the way. Oh, uh, double, double hit. The key hunters. All right, so for some reason, it was decided that boulders were going to be an enemy in the game. Uh, I don't know why, but there you go. Th those were the boulders. They hit hard, yeah. Fair enough, fair enough. All right, so we've entered Three Musketeers' room. And no, it is not just chocolate and chocolate nougat, although the original Three Musketeers bar did actually have three different types of nougat. They got rid of them. Oh, all. you bastard. No. Oh. Not able to clip through the last of the Three Musketeers there. Good Lord. All right. We're almost out. As you can see, Mirik, even with the extra energy tank, took a bit of a beating there, taking a good amount of damage. He has to have a power bomb here. He's got two, otherwise he could have farmed him in that last room. It's going to be moving back through Bubble Mountain one last time. Never had a Three Musketeers bar, Dave? Alright, got that jump through the door. Very nice. That might be a bonk. Nope. Oh. Very clean. Was. Oh my god. Everything's going wrong. Oh, the space <laughs> jump. The curse I is back. Everything. So we're going to be making our way back through Meridia. Uh, it happens to be faster to go through Meridia than back through Brinstar and Criteria. So we'll be coming back up. It's the exact same route that we went earlier, but we're going to go slightly differently. And now that we've got the space jump, we can move through here much, much quicker. So if you'll watch what Miri does here, he's going to be passing through this room called the Fish Tank very quickly. And then we'll be going above what is called Mount Everest, just flying, flying on through. Aw oh, man, I missed the move. wall jump. And that is the Cephi fish. Bye, Cephi. Leave you alone today. Bye, Cephi. Bye, Cephi. Oh, hey, we're back in Red Tower. And we've seen this a couple times before. This will be the last time we see it.
So we're going to be moving through these rooms a lot quicker than we did previously because we've got space jump, we've got plasma, we've got ice, we've got speed boost. Just plowing through everything, making our way to oh my God. the last level of the game. All right, let's see if Mira can get get through this wall here in a second. There we go. So satisfying. So much easier the second time you come through this area. First time, not so fun. Second time, very quick. So throughout the game, you have you've could have been coming to this room here. It's called G4 for Golden 4. Every time you kill a boss, uh, one of these little sparks comes out. The little gem bursts. But we save it for the end of the game because it's quicker that way. This uh, particular scene takes quite a while. You just kind of hang out there, get a drink, get a little stretch in because you've been running for a while. But we're going to be entering the final area of the game called Turian here in the near future. I will be taking a uh, safety save at the bottom of this elevator because Torian's hard. <laughs> uh, Chromogram is asking for you to shave the animals instead of saving the animals, so I don't know if uh, if you've got any opinions on that. Uh, yeah, I would rather shave than save. <laughs> you heard it here, folks. They've screwed me over in so many randos. <laughs> there all right so taking a safety save here because these next rooms are hard and you can die the resources are also pretty good now but that can change if the metroids are not generous so uh not a lot of people know this but those uh those little green jellyfish looking guys are actually the metroids the uh, main character's name is samus not metroid who would have thought it Get no way the legends. <laughs> legends are hard eat waste in that super Oh man, that was a good heat too. Alright, so we're going to be risky and group all these Metroids into one, that way we can save a super. Shoot all three of them at the same time. Uh, we've got giant frogs that are invulnerable to damage. Don't ask me why. Oh hey, that's a, that's a chorizo. And it's dusty. Oh boy. <laughs> Alright, well let's see what Our happens nemesis. here. Our <laughs> Uh, it's a giant frog. Oh, hey, it's the baby. Boy, the baby isn't a baby anymore. I'm late. I wasn't kneeling. Shit. Maybe. So Merrick was trying oh. to perform what's called the baby skip. A uh, very, very difficult thing to do. Did not work. That's okay. Baby skip saves about 20 seconds on average. If you notice Merrick turned to the right, if you turn right, you actually do save time. Uh, you go to you go to your room, young Metroid. You think about what you did. You should feel bad for yourself. <laughs> you just hurt the mama. So, Mother Brain very thoughtfully put a missile and energy refill room after the baby. I don't know why. I mean, it's poor planning on her part, but you know, whatever works for you. So we're gonna go ahead and get a refill. That way we stop here in the disco music that is the low energy. She's just doing the motherly thing, you know. Just just taking care of taking care of Samus here. Sweet, we clore, cleared the floor penises. No penis today. Alright, oh so this is one of the more fun tricks in the game called Zeb Skip. If you notice, uh Murig freezes that bottom Zeb there. And he clips through the game. It is a glitch, but it is an allowable glitch. Uh, because you do not have enough projectiles, missiles, super missiles to make it through each of those Zebatites. Oh, you 
rotten. Hurt. Uh, very, very tight. Oh, hey, what's what's going on with Mother Brain? I mean, the first game, just uh, kind of a brain in a vat. She's evolving. I do need to count shots on this. Uh oh, got got a chicken body there. Three. All right, so uh, we call the various things uh, that Mother Brain uses here. Uh, the projectiles are that's a tater tot, that's a bomb. Those are onion rings. If you land in the middle of the tater tot as it goes off, you take zero Maca. damage. Oh, okay. We just had that beam go across the room there. That is called ketchup. Ketchup will kill you. It can also double hit. It can. It does not care if you have iframes generally either. You have to have at least three full energy tanks in order to survive that rainbow hyper beam that Mother Brain just used there. Oh, looks like it's the end for Samus here. Oh, wait. It's the baby. <laughs> Jellyfish is helping. What the heck is going on here? S-class commentary. <laughs> I, have, I have no idea what's happening right now. I've never seen this thousands of times before. Oh, looks like Mother Brain's dead. Everybody pack it up, go home. Run's over. It's time. I don't know. Uh, is the CPR the baby's going to be performing? Interesting. Oh, wait. Why Why is Mother Brain doing something? She's Mother Brain. Mother Brain has reserve tanks. What a surprise. <laughs> uh, oh, the baby's changing colors. What's going to happen? Oh, the baby's dead. Baby killer. Mother brain, baby killer. Oh, hey, we got we got a rainbow beam now. So Mary going to plow through phase three of mother brain here pretty quickly. Mother brain, keep your head where I need to hit you, please. Unfortunately, the rainbow beam, hyper beam here, hits so hard that it, knock, it causes knockback, which means that it can be difficult to hit. Eating a couple onion rings there. A couple onion rings, a couple of tater tots. Uh, Mother Brain officially... Yeah. Mother Brain officially dead this time. No reserve tanks. Saving those oh. animals. Oh, we gotta save... Oh, wait. Mother Brain was a load-bearing boss. Some, somehow, we got some sort of a kill switch going on here, and now it's all <laughs> disco beats. We've, we've reached the club. All right, so flying through escape here. Quite literally. Yes, indeed. Uh, clipping right through that pirate like he's not even there. So this room called Leodox, uh, for somebody who had a good time with it a long time ago. It's funny, uh, you get named rooms after things because people fail them. Excellent. We got the charge shot, making that climb look so easy. Don't forget to save the animals. But I don't wanna. Oh shit. Come on, space jump. Space. <laughs> Space junk. I not have time now. The animals, uh, for some reason, are where the bomb chorizo was. Uh, don't know why. But uh, if you take all this extra time wasting the frames, uh, you get to see this nice little tiny spaceship go through the side of the end credits. Uh, Eric just opened the wall for the Edicoons and the Cora that you never saw and that were not a part of the game until somebody voted for them to be a part of the game here. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Time now. 
Hey, you didn't even over jump the ship. Yeah. GG's. Forgot to mention when time stops. Not too bad of a time, Eric. That's not that's not bad for uh 50, yeah. Fifty three oh three is pretty good for a marathon, I'd reckon. <laughs> Alright, so if you me. watch watch the right hand side of the screen here, you'll see a little pink purple spark here in a second. Oh, we're getting the true good ending. True good ending. Oh, there it was. That that is what all that extra waste of time was. That one little <laughs> tiny spark. Thanks, guys. Oh, one pixel. <laughs> Thanks, Rocket. Thank you, everybody, uh, for the GGs. I appreciate it. Uh, I want to thank Dave. Uh, first off, he's dope and a dick at the same time. I don't know how that's possible, but uh, throws a mean party. And uh, you should follow him and watch him. He needs partner. He deserves it. Um, Pity and Mishra, thank you for hanging out and doing commentary. Uh, this this me. runs this runs a little too difficult for me to like do good commentary for it. But uh got anything to say, uh Pity and Mishra? No. This is a, this is a good time. Uh Deer Force new, by the way. Uh and the the real Super Metroid nerds will know what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, we got to make sure we got to make sure we got the the good good ending, right? Yeah. yeah. So this was a this was in fact a one hundred percent run. <laughs> so we got to we got to make sure we got one hundred percent. Yeah, we got to make sure. Yeah. Got a but, partner uh, with the four penis, Captain Gatto, genius. Write this man a check. No, I, I appreciate all the support. I've been uh, pretty much nonstop grinding this. Uh, I started last year around this time, took a, like a month or two break, and then been working on trying to get a sub-50 uh, PB for about eight months. And my current PB is a 50-22, thanks to uh, Baby Skip failing me. But uh, it is a very active community. It is a very fun speed run. It's very technically demanding. And uh, even with arthritis, like real bad arthritis in my fingers, uh, it's still possible. But it's it's definitely a fun run. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the nice thing, uh, just to second this, I've only been speed running this game for four or five months now. But there are so many people who will help you learn the speed run. We've got a great Please Discord, sir. very active. Deer Force. Metroid's a girl? What? Metroid's a girl. No. Wait. I thought we said her name was Zelda. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Zelda. Yep. <laughs> uh, sadly, Chromagram, uh, Gunpei Yokoi it was actually his name. He died in 1997 in a car wreck. It was, it was horrible. Oh, man. I, I missed a lot of items, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, we're going to have to do it again. <laughs> All right. Uh, restart the timer. Well, shit. What we did you miss? Uh, at least 70%-ish of the items. You only got 23 <laughs> items out of the 100 items in the game? What were you thinking? I don't know. Faster. That's why. <laughs> you think this is any percent or something? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. But uh, once again, thank you, everybody, for hanging out. This has been an awesome uh, event. And thank you for having me. And <laughs> Hey, Dave, reset the timer. Keep going. What are you doing? You reset it? You bastard. <laughs> yep. Hundo yeah. run. You gotta do hundo now. Maybe next year. Oh, that's, uh, that's actually uh, tomorrow. There's a uh, hundo by the former world record holder of, uh, of hundo, uh, Shiny Zenny. If you want to see some real good Metroid play, uh, go watch him because 
He makes me look like a chump. Two two words, Buri. Reverse slinky. Yeah, shut up. <laughs> Brain dance. <laughs> but uh oh man. Ninja Gaiden one up next by uh Knuckle Buster with commentary from Razul. Oh, that's gonna be dope. That's all I got. We done did the thing, right? Yeah, we done did the thing. GG's, Mirig. Very well Dave. done. Dave, are you alive? A oh, very well, or a very technical run. Yes, I am alive. I was letting you guys talk and do your outro thing. Nobody technically <laughs> said bye yet, so I was waiting. <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, this is uh, bald, beautiful Dave signing out. See you next mission. There you go. <laughs>